Hey, star friends. Uh, I'm Deborah Bird, and I'm here to tell you about the coolest date idea ever for Valentine's Day 2025. Um, the brightest planet, Venus, is reaching its greatest brightness for this evening apparition on February 14th, Valentine's Day. And you might know that Venus is named for the Roman goddess of love and beauty. So the planet of love, brightest on Valentine's Day. Isn't that cool? We'll tell you how to see Venus and impress your date. But first, let's bring in Earth Sky's John Goss, who has some news. Oh, th 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 thank you, Deborah. Um, well, of course, you all know what this Friday is, which you just gave that away. It's not only Valentine's Day, though, it, and it's not only the day in which Venus is at its brightest. It's the 35th anniversary of one of the most important astronomical images ever taken. It's known as the pale blue dot. Perhaps you've heard of it. This isn't much of a picture really. Uh, um, it, it really, but it, what it shows makes it so special or what it doesn't show makes it so special. It was taken by the Voyager 1 spacecraft, which was launched in September of 1997 uh, on a mission uh, to five excuse me, fly, fly past Jupiter in 1979 and then Saturn in 1980. Well, 10 years later, uh, on February 14th, on Valentine's Day of 1990, uh, after spectacularly completing those, those objectives uh, and at the urging of the famous planetary astronomer Carl Sagan, uh, NASA directed the Voyager craft to look back towards the sun and Earth. At the, at the time, Voyager was 3.8 billion miles from home. That's 40 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun, so it was pretty far away. This image that you see inspired Dr. Sagan uh, to write his famous book, The Pale Blue Dot, which included a short but passionate essay, a lament almost, uh, on our stewardship of this little world and on the treatment that we give to ourselves. Let me read a few words from this. From this distant vantage point, the Earth might not seem of any particular interest, but for us, it's different. Consider again that dot. That's here, that's home, that's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. So on this Valentine's Day, or any other Valentine's Day, consider those thoughts. Thank you, Deborah. John, thank you. That's so beautiful. I hope everybody can see that tiny little dot. It almost looks like it's caught in a sunbeam. Uh, and it's it's us. It's the it, Earth. You know, seen by the Voyager 1 spacecraft 35 years ago this week. Yep. So that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> You're so, welcome. So Voyager 1 saw Earth as a dot. Yes. And if you look with your eye alone, you'll see Venus as a dot in your western sky after sunset. And I've got to tell you, it's bright, and it's been bright and very noticeable for at least a month now. So this is a screenshot from somebody I follow here on YouTube, David Pakman. Uh, and this was from about a month ago. And he was reporting on an ABC affiliate in New York that was warning people about a possibly dangerous object in the evening sky. And he was showing this image, which to me looks like an out of focus image of the planet Venus in twilight. And, and David was also saying, yes, this is Venus. So we see a lot of out of focus planet images here at Earth Sky, along with emails from people worried about what these objects in the sky might be. And so guys, just adjust your focus wheel and these objects won't look so strange in your photos and your videos. But yes, you can see Venus in a blue sky or a twilight sky. And yes, it's at its brightest for 2025 this week. And David was showing it as an example of misinformation. And he was saying, I can't believe that we've come to this. But in fact, Venus has often been mistaken for something scary in the night sky, not just in our time, but uh, in 1945, the crew of the USS York 
New York was ordered to shoot down an object that they thought might be a balloon carrying an enemy weapon, but in fact, they were shooting at Venus. And there are many other stories like that too in the history of science, going back even into the 19th century and even farther back, people mistaking Venus for something dangerous or strange. But this is Venus, this, this animation is showing Venus and it's what you'll be seeing soon, I hope, uh, if you go out and look in the evening sky. So this is a planet it's orbiting one step closer to the sun than Earth, and it's about the same size and density as Earth. In fact, people used to call Earth and Venus twin worlds. Uh, and this isn't Venus as you'd see it up close, by the way, because Venus is entirely covered with clouds. This image uh, is from the Magellan space, spacecraft, which orbited Venus from 1990, until it was intentionally crashed into the planet's clouds in 1994. And that spacecraft carried radar and was able to peer under the clouds of Venus to create this image of what its surface might look like. But here's a cloud covered Venus. And this is a recent image from Japan's Venus Climate Orbiter spacecraft, which is named At uh, Akatsuki, Akatsuki, and it's been orbiting Venus since 2015. So this image is said to be the clearest picture of Venus ever taken. And those clouds don't let us peer down to the surface in visible light, but we like those clouds in one way. We stargazers like those clouds because they're what make Venus so bright as seen from Earth. The clouds of Venus are very good at reflecting sunlight. And so it's sunlight bouncing off these clouds that create that dazzlingly bright planet that we all can see in the West after sunset right now. And this week when Venus is at or near its peak in brightness, for sure people will be reporting it as a UFO. So go out there and look for it and you can tell them otherwise. Just look in the Western twilight sky tonight or any night soon. And then you can go to some uh, beautiful spot with a clear view to the Western sky and show your sweetheart. Uh, Venus at its brightest on this Valentine's Day, or it doesn't even have to just be your sweetheart. It could be your, your friend, or it could be your, your grandma <laughs> or somebody. So this image is from Stephen Sweet in Ontario. He's a member of the Earth Sky Community of Photographers, and you'll find Stephen as Lunar 101 Moon Book on Facebook and other social media. He's been there for a long time. And this photo shows Venus near the moon, on February 1st, and they looked super amazing that night, the two brightest objects in the night sky right next to each other. Uh, so you won't see Venus near the moon this week. The moon has moved on, and in fact, we've got a full moon tonight. Uh, but one interesting and maybe surprising thing is that if you looked at Venus through a telescope in early February, you would have found, on the night that this picture was taken, you would have found Venus and the moon in exactly the same phase. And so, yes, our star, our sun, uh, follows its path through the Milky Way galaxy. And like the Earth, Venus is orbiting around the sun. And so Venus shows phases for the same reason that the moon shows phases, which is that sometimes we're just seeing a fraction of its lighted half or day side. These two images are from Gwen Forrester in Tennessee, and this is the crescent moon and Venus, both seen through a telescope. So thank you, Gwen. Uh, and in fact, Venus is always in a crescent phase when we see it at its brightest from Earth. And uh, if that seems contradictory, that, that a crescent planet could look brighter than the fuller planet that we see at other times? Well, here's why it's not. 
So this diagram shows the orbit of Venus. And again, Venus orbits one step inward from Earth around the sun. And this, in this image, uh, the Earth is at the bottom of the image. And Venus is about to go between us and the sun, which it does about every 19 and a half months. And right now, as we speak, Venus is speeding along in orbit at 22 miles per second. And that's in contrast to the speed of the planet that we're all standing on right now, Earth, which is 18 miles per second. So when Venus is between us and the sun, astronomers call it an inferior conjunction. And Venus will pass between us and the sun on March 22nd, 23rd. So right now that crescent Venus is getting bigger and bigger and bigger in our sky because Venus is racing up behind Earth in orbit about to gain a lap on us. And so greatest brilliancy for Venus is a combination of those two things, how big the crescent of Venus is in our sky and combined with how much of that illuminated crescent we see. So it's a trade-off, and it's that trade-off that'll give us Venus at greatest brilliancy on Valentine's Day. So let's look at some pictures. This image is from Tom and Jane Wildener in Weatherly, Pennsylvania. It's from the year 2020, but same situation as now. Venus was becoming a thinner crescent, but a bigger crescent in our sky because it was about to go between the Earth and Sun. And this one is from Roberto Ortu in Italy. He captured these images of Venus in 2023. And same deal here. He's capturing these images over time, in this case from May to August of 2023. And all that time, Venus was racing along in orbit, uh, coming up behind the Earth, getting ready to go between the Earth and Sun, which it did that year on August 13th. So I just want to do a little aside here about Venus going between us and the sun. It's not going exactly between us and the sun this year. The last time it did that was in June of 2012, and astronomers call that sort of event a transit of Venus. And we saw a transit of Venus in June of 2008, also because transits of Venus always happen in pairs. So think about what's happening in this animation and about why we see Venus here as a dark silhouette. So half of Venus, like half of the Earth, is always illuminated by the sun. Venus has a night side and a day side, just as Earth does. And so when Venus goes between us and the sun, as it was doing in the year 2012, exactly between, uh, we see that dark silhouette because we're seeing only the night side of Venus. And of course, the day side of Venus is facing the sun, so it's facing entirely away from us. And that's, that's what we're seeing here. So the June 2012 transit of Venus was the last one in this century. Uh, the next pair of Venus transits won't come until the years 2117 and 2125, but some children alive today will surely live to see those Venus transits in the early 22nd century. So this year, Venus won't transit the sun, and what it'll do instead is on March 22nd, 23rd, uh, if we could see it, it'll be crossing the daytime sky with the sun. And if we could see it, we'd find that it crosses to one side of the sun, not directly in front of it, but to one side of it. So uh, then, uh, but before that happens, uh, you can look for Venus uh, around March 1st, which is my 74th birthday. Uh, and in early March, Venus will be a little fainter than it is this week. But once again, it'll be right next to a waxing crescent moon. So very beautiful thing to see in the sky on March 1st. And if you miss Venus and the moon on March 1st, try again on March 2nd. The moon will have moved in its orbit around Earth. And on March 2nd, it'll have moved to being above Venus, 
with its lighted portion facing down toward the sunset point on the horizon. So the day side of the moon is facing away and the day side of Venus is facing away in exactly the same way uh, on the nights of March 1st and 2nd. And by the way, what do you think will happen after Venus goes between us and the sun on March 22nd, 23rd? It'll be gone from our evening sky, but it'll quickly emerge on the other side of the sun. And then it'll be fleeing ahead of us in orbit. Like right now it's catching up to us, but after it goes between us and the sun, it'll be just racing ahead of us in orbit because remember it's moving faster than we are. And then we'll have another greatest brilliancy for Venus in the east before sunrise on April 27th. So when you're out there with your friends and family or just with yourself uh, this week, seeing Venus at its brightest on Valentine's Day 2025, remember that we're riding on a planet going around the sun Earth is moving at 18 miles per second. And remember that there are other worlds relatively near us in space, and we often see them in our night sky. They tend to be bright, and Venus is the brightest one at all of all, uh, at its greatest brilliancy this week for all of 2025. I want to thank my producer today, Jeremiah Guajardo, uh, and please don't forget to hit share like, and subscribe. We're so close to 50,000 subscribers now. Thanks to all of you. I'm Deborah Bird. One Earth, one sky, Earth sky.